Welcome to the RJG YouTube channel. My name is Marty Key. I'm a trainer and consultant with RJG. And today we're gonna to be talking about flash. So one of the big misconceptions in injection molding is that speed causes flash. So what we're gonna do is take a look at our parts. The parts that we've got coming out right now uh, do have a little bit of flash along the edges that would be considered um, unacceptable. So we wanna look at the, one of the causes of this and figure out how to fix it. So one main thing to note is that our machine is set up at the maximum injection speed possible allowed for this machine, which is 7.25 inches per second. And we have this flash. So the one thing that we're not gonna do is adjust that speed at all, which should dispel the fact that, fla that flash is caused by speed. So one of the first things we're, that we're gonna do is go back and look at our fill only parts. So we do have a procedure for how to correctly set up a fill only part. Um, if you want information on that, feel free to look at our uh, YouTube video that we have on that called the fill only procedure. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to remove our pack and hold pressure. So we create our fill only part. So we'll wait for that shot. So one of the ways that you can think about speed in relationship to flash is to use the scenario or the analogy of a car pulling into a driveway um, or into your garage. So when you pull into your garage, you pull in at a good rate and the closer you get to the back of that garage wall, you begin to slow down. You're not gonna go 70 miles an hour on the way home and use that back of that garage wall to stop you from going 70 miles an hour. So this scenario that I just gave you is what causes flash. So it's not the speed that causes it, it's the speed contacting the wall. In this case, our plastic is contacting the back of the cavity wall and causing a huge jump in cavity pressure or pressure inside the cavity. Once that cavity gets to a certain point or a certain pressure, it's going to actually begin to separate the mold halves causing flash. So let's take a look at our fill only parts and we can see the flash is gone, but we don't have any kind of a short shot inside of it here. So what we wanna do is actually have a short shot or actually contain a small amount of short shot in here. So just think about this, we're driving home at 70 miles an hour. We wanna start slowing down about the time we get to the driveway so we don't smack into the back of that, gar that garage wall. We wanna do the same thing with our plastic. We're still traveling the same speed. So we're gonna adjust our, our switch over point or our changeover. This is the point where we quit using speed to fill the cavity and begin using pressure. So what we were doing in our scenario before is going essentially too far, too fast inside of the cavity. So now we're gonna give it a couple of shots and we will we'll check our, um, one of the things that we're gonna check is our part weight. So that is a very important thing to make sure that you have documented. Again, we have a video to show you how to create and document a good fill only part weight that will give you a visual reference along with a weight reference, okay? So I know from, from my documented process that what I'm looking for on these parts is a weight somewhere around 6.65 grams. So I've made a quick adjustment um, to get back to where I think my parts should be um, visually. And we're gonna take a look at the next shot that comes out. See what that looks like. Okay, so now I can see that my, um, I do have a visual short shot on both cavities. This is a family tool, so a little bit of imbalance here, uh, but I do see that I'm not completely full in both of these. I've, I've, I've kind of recreated my fill only procedure. I know what my fill only weight should be. I'm looking for somewhere around 6.64 or 6.65 grams. So I'm gonna remove these parts, throw them on the scale. 
I'm at 6.63. So I'm one hundredth of a gram off. So I would consider that a good reestablishment of my not of my fill only parts. So now I'm going to try to go back in and add my hold pressure that I originally had. We like to use a good reference point is about 50% of your injection pressure. So beforehand, before I took my pack and hold off, I was running about 7,000 PSI for my injection pressure. That is because that plastic was hitting the back of the cavity wall, creating a lot of pressure inside the cavity. That, that cavity pressure was actually separating the clamp. So we call this injection pressure overcoming the clamping force, the tonnage. We were essentially blowing the mold open, causing flash. So now we're going to set our um, hold pressure to roughly half of our injection pressure. We're going to set that to about 2200. Put our, our hold speed back on there. And now we're going to wait for the next shot and see what those look like. Um, again, one of the things that we want to discuss or that we have discussed is that speed does not cause the flash. We can see that we've never made a single speed adjustment. We've only made position adjustments. So we're not going as, as far at that same speed. This has caused our injection pressure to drop roughly 3000 PSI. So we were at a, a little, um, about 7,500. Now we're right at about 4,600 PSI. We're going to wait for the next shot to come out. Visually acceptable part. Everything looks good. The flash is gone. So we said that injection pressure overcomes clamping force. So feel free to leave us some comments on what you think about the video, but try to answer this question. What are some other things that causes flash in injection molding? What would be other causes of that? We thank you guys for tuning in and uh, have a great day.